Hi everybody and welcome to another piano review here on the Miriam Pianos YouTube channel. My name is Stu Harrison and in today's video we're taking a look slightly back at Roland's HP702. Kind of a product that is mid-cycle, been with us a couple of years, uh, but we never actually had a chance to review it on its own and take a look at its merits and just sit down and enjoy it, at least on camera. We certainly have done that for hours and hours off camera. It's the first time that you have joined us here on the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hit that subscribe and notification bell because we'd love you to be able to come back and see more. We're always coming out with piano reviews and piano related stuff. Uh, without further ado, let's jump right into today's review of the Roland HP 702. HP line has been with the world for several decades now. It was one of Roland's first home digital lines that they came out with. And this HP 702 has also been out for, I think now a couple of years, uh, but we never actually got around to reviewing it. And so it's always kind of fun to go back on an instrument that's been out for a little while, uh, kind of halfway through its product cycle uh, and take a look and, and see, is this, you know, holding up well compared to instruments that have come out within the last couple of months or the last year. Uh, and so that's exactly what we're going to do today with the HP 702. It is a fresh 2022 look uh, at an instrument uh, that is uh, now very well known and well liked by the marketplace. Uh, this one is, of course, in satin white. Now, the HP line uh, is the first true home digital line that I think Roland um, has as, as you walk up through their various model ranges. Uh, they just came out with like the new RP701 and F701. Um, and I guess you could argue that the RP701 um, is a home digital line, but it, it isn't really targeted at those people who are looking for a long-term instrument that isn't acoustic. Um, the RP, the F, uh, obviously um, some of the lower RP, like the new RP107, uh, those types of instruments are geared towards people who are kind of in transition phase of, of their piano journey. You know, maybe this is a first digital piano uh, with, the, with the outlook of possibly getting into an acoustic later on uh, or thinking about upgrading to another digital. But to me, the HP 702 is the first instrument that can really truly stand as one of those options that's targeted towards somebody who just wants a digital and is possibly going to have this in the house for 10 15 years. And one of the things you really notice about a lot of the Roland cabinets in their HP line and in their LX line is just the quality uh, and the meticulousness by which these cabinets are put together, uh, as well the considerations that go into how the componentry is laid out on the inside, often how some of the speakers are baffled. This is a company that really looks at a digital piano in a very holistic way. It isn't just about the electronic components or it isn't just about the action. It is how everything fits together in one cohesive uh, system to deliver an experience and the build quality. I really cannot emphasize this enough. When you take a look at Roland's uh, service rates, their warranty rates, this is you know right at the top of the industry. Now let's start with sound as we often do. Uh, the 702 is the first point in the home digital line where you get supernatural piano modeling. Uh, when you were down in the RP and FP series, we don't get the piano model and we do have the supernatural engine, which is a sample based engine. Uh, but here we get the modeling and modeling for those of you who are new to some of this terminology, uh, really means that a algorithm or basically a computer, a small computer in here, um, is generating the piano tone in real time based on a computer model rather than replaying uh, previously captured recordings of another piano. And there are pros and cons to both of these systems, uh, but Roland really has committed to having their upper lines be driven by this modeling engine. And there's a couple of VST engines out there as well, which are really well regarded uh, that use this technology. Piano Tech is really uh, kind of the leading innovator in this world when we get into the computer side of things. But on the digital side of things, Roland has been uh, kind of on the forefront of this for 
I would say probably uh, 10 years or more. If we go into the R&D range, we're probably getting close to 15 years. Really started with the V piano, I think back in 2008 or 2009. Uh, so that is what is driving uh, the core acoustic piano tones. Uh, and I'm gonna play it for you right now so you get a sense of exactly what that uh, sound is. So I've said this in several other videos, but um, when I play the Roland Supernatural Engine, um, it's a highly immersive tonal experience. It's a very complex tone. There's lots going on. You can even emphasize some of those um, additional elements like some of the resonances. Uh, so you get a truly, uh, uh, just such a detailed sonic experience out of this. They aren't, or at least, I don't think they are trying to replicate um, some of the experiences you get with sampling where uh, you really can tell that you are actually in front of a piano. Like they're trying to replicate the three-dimensional uh, experience of sitting at a piano. More likely than not, what they're trying for is a direct three-dimensional tonal experience uh, to your ear that isn't replicating uh, what it would be like to actually be behind a piano, more like you're playing and what's reaching your ear uh, is just that pure tone. Uh, and so it is more immersive, it's more uh, kind of um, omnidirectional uh, than some of the sampling. Um, and so that's an experience that I think some people are really gonna like. Uh, without headphones, it's really hard to even tell the difference. Um, through speakers, uh, it's just a very lush sound.
It's also very dynamic. One of the great things about having this piano tone being generated by a computer algorithm is that virtually all of those components are available to be edited. And on the 702 you can access that by pressing Piano Designer and you kind of get like this first layer of editability. So we have ambience, uh, we have the th uh, headphone 3D ambience you can turn on or off, uh, brilliance setting, uh, and to get into any of those you just press the data wheel uh, and then you can make those adjustments uh, right here. Your master tuning. Roland tends to set it at 442. They really like that the pianos have more of a European tone, but you can set that down to 440 if you wish. Temperament, temperament key. And then you can really dig deep by going into the piano tone edit. And this is where you can set, uh, simulate how um, open or closed the lid is, the key off noise, the hammer noise, duplex scale, full scale string resonance, damper resonance, cabinet resonance. And I could demonstrate every single one of those. I'm, I'm actually just gonna demonstrate the soundboard type just to give you a sense of how dramatically you can edit the tone and the character of the tone. So here's soundboard type one, which is the default. Here's two. Here's three, four, and soundboard type number five. So just by that one component you can hear how dramatically the whole character of the tone is changing. More high end. And then of course damper noise and you can even get into single note volumes, tuning and character by note. So your ability to create a completely customized tonal palette for yourself uh, is pretty extraordinary. And that's what you're getting uh, with that modeling engine and it is available here on the 702. So for super piano nerds where this is the right budget, they don't have a large room to fill and maybe it's gonna be sort of a similar uh, split between headphone use as well as speaker use, 702 I think really offers a, a great combination uh, of features. Now moving from the 702's uh, piano modeling engine uh, into say their e-piano. And of course piano designer not available on the e-piano so Quite a few sounds to select from there. Then you've got your strings. And so on and so forth. love a good French horn burn. Uh, pizzicato.
and through all of our various strings. Then you get into others, and then finally the general MIDI 2 sound bank. Uh, when people look at the spec sheet, they're going to see uh, sounds in an excess of 300. Most of those sounds are from the general MIDI 2 sound bank. Uh, now, not all GM2 sound banks sound exactly the same. Um, but you know they they are highly similar to, um, you know as you go from brand to brand. So the highest quality tones are obviously going to be the ones not a part of the general MIDI uh, two sound bank. And I think those ones are sort of in and around the 50-ish range. Those are your super high quality sounds. Uh, now we mentioned this is coming to you through a pair of 12 watt speakers. That doesn't sound like a lot for an instrument of this size. Uh, and if you've got a larger room or if you've got a room that has a fairly absorbent floor, uh, you are going to feel a bit of a lack of low-end power compared to something like, say, uh, the Kawhi CN 201 or 301. But where it makes up for that is the way that they um, baffle the, the speakers and the way that the cabinet really is designed to operate as, as, an, as an actual resonating chamber uh, means that in terms of the, just the overall spectrum of tone, you really are getting quite a bit uh, of projection and a really nicely well-rounded tone. It's just a little bit lacking down in the lower range uh, where you know you, you just can't substitute uh, cone size and, and power of the amplifier. So that's why I say this is really going to be well intended for people who are going to be using it uh, not in a large room, but sort of a small to medium room, um, and maybe a combination of headphones as well as with speakers. So the 702 uses a tried and true action from Roland. It is the PHA4. PHA4 in its current incarnation. Uh, has been with us for well over five years. Uh, they had PHA4 even longer than that, but they had various levels. Its current uh, PHA4 has sort of been consolidated into one, uh, and they've been making some very slight improvements to things like cushioning uh, and, uh, and just waiting on the PHA4 over that time. Uh, I really like the PHA4. I've mentioned this many, many times uh, on the channel. It's certainly one of the most familiar actions that I play on. Uh, it uh, is not necessarily uh, a one-size-fits-all action, I would say, for high-level classical. Roland's PHA 50 action, which is what you get when you go one step up from uh, here, uh, is going to deliver um, an even more authentic uh, key touch and sense of weight and motion on that key uh, versus the PHA 4. Uh, but given that the PHA4 is available as far down, uh, you know, as the uh, FP30X in markets like the United States, um, I think it delivers an extraordinary value for what it is. Uh, because I really like the sense of motion and the weight that the key has. It's got a triple sensor. It's got escapement. Uh, and so for real nuance players, especially uh, jazz players, I would say particularly, uh, I think are going to love this action. Um, it gives just the right amount of resistance so that you're not striking a whole bunch of unintended notes as you're, uh, you know, either as you're improvising or doing a lot of accompanying, something like that. Uh, it's going to feel great for pop. Um, you know, I, I think for classical players who are not super used to or going back and forth between acoustic pianos, the PHA4 would also be a very satisfying action. As I said, it's just when you compare it to the PHA50 where I think the 50 is going to just feel a little bit better to people who are incredibly used to and conditioned uh, to playing on like grand piano actions uh, in the acoustic sense. Uh, the PHA4 action uh, has a bit of texture on both the white key as well as the black key. Uh, and it definitely has a slightly harder bottom uh, to the action uh, than some of the other ones. So I'm just going to turn the volume down. There is a very soft um, sort of upstroke on the key, but on the downstroke you definitely are hitting a, a solid but, uh, but noticeable uh, key bed. And so that definitely gives you a sense that you're really connected with the keyboard, uh, but it's going to be slightly harder than what you might be used to 
um, out of an action such as uh, the Kawhi or some of the Yamaha actions. So again, a lot of this is just such personal preference. Um, but I really like the, the solid uh, feeling that this key bed uh, gives me with the PHA4. Um, it also has very, very reliable MIDI output on it as well. I've used uh, the PHA4 action in a number of different instruments for MIDI inputting before, uh, and it really gave me a very accurate full range output, not you know stuff that's squeezed to like between 30 and 90 only, and you're, you're very rarely getting anything over that. Um, and when it is, it's, it's, it's not very accurate. So nice full range spectrum out of these sensors and the way that they've got it made it to the physical action. We're going to be back for one last quick section where we're going to talk about some of the other non-musical features or, or some of the setup or functionality of the instrument. Thanks so much for being with us. See you in a minute. The control interface on the HP 702 and the HP 704 is probably one of my favorites in the entire piano industry. Um, even amongst Roland pianos, uh, some are to me more well thought out than others and this for sure has got to be at the top of the list. Uh, everything is laid out in front of you, they're not splitting things between the, the, uh, the front uh, and the side. The volume is a knob, which I really like. It's not press buttons. Uh, it's not a slider. I'm not actually a huge fan of the slider. I know that's kind of been the standard for a long time, but it's really hard to actually be super accurate. And sometimes the slider gets dusty and starts, you know, stops functioning. So I like that everything is here. Uh, I like that everything is very clearly labeled. There are many, many different knobs on here. It makes it uh, super easy to access, you know, large data sets. Uh, or where you're going to be selecting, uh, you know, numeric values from a large list such as tempo. It's all there. Uh, all of the stuff that's more system related, we've got a very familiar, you know, system preference widget that everybody's used to looking at, you know, because of computer. Uh, so you can get in there. That's where more of your systemy stuff is going to be, uh, you know, uh, everything from uh, naming uh, songs and recording uh, options for some of the standard MIDI file stuff because it does have a basic recorder uh, on there. Uh, you can assign some of your pedals there. Uh, you can create some MIDI settings, you know, what MIDI channel is going to be um, uh, sending on there. Uh, you've got, uh, you know, Bluetooth settings. So everything is kind of out of the way over there because that's not really what you're going to be wanting to muck around with with your performance. So I love that that's a separate menu versus the other menu you can get into uh, when you're into your piano designer and really trying to sculpt and mold what you're doing with your piano sound, which is kind of the only other time you're going to be into a menu uh, type of a mode. So that's great. It also has registration function. It has split uh, and dual, which is, you know, dual sometimes it's called layer with some other manufacturers. Split, obviously, you've got that in two. Uh, transpose is another uh, fairly um, obvious but basic function that's there pretty well on every instrument. Um, this has Bluetooth MIDI as well as Bluetooth audio, so you can send Bluetooth audio to this, and the Bluetooth MIDI allows this to connect with mobile devices and some desktops also lets you remote control this with Roland's um, app and they've got a newer updated app, the Roland Piano app, uh, which is uh, a constant, it seems to be getting a lot more attention and focus from Roland than some of their past apps. Uh, there's already been a couple of version updates and I've heard from Roland that there's, there's even going to be uh, some, some further tweaks uh, and uh, bug, fix, bug fixes coming uh, to that shortly. So it's, it's clear that this has become a bigger focus for them than, than some of those companion apps in the past. It also comes loaded with quite a bit of classical music where you can turn on and off left hand, right hand, or all of it uh, to play along with it. So uh, for people who are into the classical thing, um, this is a really cool playing companion app. Uh, it does have quarter inch outputs. So for people who are wanting to use this as a recording source, because certainly for acoustic piano, this has got an engine that is at a commercial grade level. You totally could use this uh, to record that. Um, then you've got the option to do that uh, right here, uh, which is also handy. The piano comes in several colors. As I mentioned at the beginning, 
Um, they do not mess around with the quality of the cabinets or the quality of the veneers. Uh, they're highly durable and they're really, uh, really well done. So you can get this in a satin black, a white, you can get this in a dark rosewood, and I also believe you can get this in a light oak. Of course, you can check either our website, Roland's website, for some of those extra details uh, on uh, the finish options. There you go. HP 702, still an incredibly satisfying piano in, in my book. Uh, even in 2022. And from a pricing standpoint, uh, sitting very similarly to where uh, something like a uh, Kawhi uh, CA49 um, is going to be sitting, uh, very similar to where uh, kind of their CN301, kind of halfway between a 201 and a 301 is going to be sitting. Um, I guess this is uh, likely going to be competing with, say, uh, like a Yamaha uh, CLP, what, 735, something uh, something in that range, uh, maybe the, the 745. But an amazing piano tone engine packed into this, really hard to beat that. If you like the Roland uh, tone, you've got full like industrial strength editing capability on here. Uh, you've got a solid proven action, and then as an ensemble, just a build quality that you can really be confident in for somebody who really wants this to be uh, their first and last digital piano for at least the next decade. Uh, it could be a really great companion. Anyway, thank you very much for checking out uh, our rundown and review of the HP 702. Uh, if it's the first time that you are here on the channel, we would really sincerely appreciate if you hit that subscribe and notification bell. Always love to hear from people uh, from all over the world. The community is constantly growing. We'd love to have you be our next member. My name is Stu Harrison, and have yourselves a great day.